Hello, welcome back. This is Jeff Byers, and this is Annie 255, and we're on Module 9, Lesson Content, Lectures, and Video Tutorials. So let's take a look at uh, the Rube Goldberg machine, and this is a great little illustration of how, you know, we're going to use dynamics, and how this works really well with creating, or recreating a more simplistic, this is way too intense to try to do in, in in one week even if we just did this little thing here you'd have to model and texture everything in here and that would just be too much for one week this is probably maybe two or three weeks a full project maybe three or four weeks uh, to get done but we're going to uh, basically um, use the same techniques that there's a chain reaction um, that we see going on here. We have the alarm bell going off, vibrating the paper wad um, or ball or whatever that is, gumball or whatever you want to call it, which uh, you know falls down with gravity and then flips, you know, would, would fall down here, but this would knock the cup over, releasing the balls, which rolls into this can and pulls that down and cuts the wire for the shoe, which it's a stapler and staple something. Very complex motions here, um, but with dynamics, this would be hard, really hard to animate. I'm not saying you couldn't do it, I'm just saying it would be hard to animate to make it look realistic. Um, that's where um, dynamics, com dynamics comes in, and I've got some illustrations here, an example here of uh, kind of a Rube, uh, Rube Goldberg kind of what we're looking at doing um, and then you guys can read that stuff but we're gonna go through um, each one of these constraints so these constraints help you do what you want to do let's say um, let's go up here with the nail constraint anything that's that you would want to create as a pendulum action a rigid line like it's pulling, the gravity is pulling that steel ball down. So it's going to look like the wires are straight. And that would be a nail. You'd have to use a nail constraint. You couldn't do it any other way. So these constraints are wonderful to use. And while you're, and this would be another good example of a nail constraint, is that wire that you see hanging between the pail and the top of the shears. Um, and will the pail will pull down, will pull down on the shears. And here's another good um, constraint right here. So these would be considered constraints. Anything with wires would be considered con constraints. Um, regular dynamics uh, work as the ball falls over. And regular dynamics when this hits the cup. So, you know, you won't use it all the time, but they're there for you if you need to. And so we're going to use all of them except for except for the barrier constraint. I don't see any real reason to use that. Um, you can use a flat plane and, and then turn it uh, invisible and that that actually has you have a lot more control that way. The barrier I've really not ever I've used it a couple times, but I really don't see any reason. It's this no different than creating a flat plane and creating a passive rigid body like I said and just making it non-visible during rendering so you don't see it but it's still a barrier that's all it is just it just keeps the object from uh, bouncing but we'll I'll show you still how it works and if you find a if you find a reason to use it great uh, go for it okay so we'll start at the top and the nail constraint okay basically it just it is what it is that meaning that there's a constraint that goes from the center of the pivot point of the object and then you move it okay or you can offset the position of that um, when you create it um, you can move that easily so I'll show you how to do that it's pretty simple to use really uh, you just gotta remember that there's some uh, things uh, for you to that you'll be able to control it a little bit better and I'll show you how to do that as well. So let's go ahead and get started. 
Again, this, these are very simple to do, so we'll, we'll spend like five minutes on each one of them, I'm hoping, and not spend too much more time on that. Let's go ahead in Maya. All right, so we're going to go ahead and start with the nail. Let's go ahead and get our scene set up for the rest of them, too, as well. So let's go ahead and flatten that out, a cube, and just make it a little bit bigger. Make it about the size of your grid that you see here. I'm in centimeters, so if you need to change some, some things. You might want to go into preferences, make sure that your playback speed is play every frame and max playback speed is 24 frames times one. Just go ahead and save that so you're all set up. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here and set up my FX. If, I, if you haven't set up your FX app, go to Hotbox Controls and go to Show FX and FX Only. Now you just have this line of effects that uh, it's a lot nicer to, to work with. So I'm going to go to Fields and Solvers. I'm going to create Passive, Active. Now, this is where the rest of these uh, constraints are. So they're under the Legacy Rigid Bodies. And the reason I'm showing you Legacy first is they're a lot easier to use. And I want you to understand those first until we get into um, um, Bullet Effects, which is a lot more uh, involved. Okay, so. We're going to start with these. They're a lot of fun to use. They're a lot more simplistic and, and straightforward. So again, um, active rigid body allow two bodies to react to each other and you cannot animate those. Uh, passive rigid body basically is like a floor. Uh, so for the active rigid body to um, you know hit against it. Okay. Um, passive rigid bodies can be animated, so just remember that. So this is going to be a passive rigid body. I'm not going to animate it, but it's it's now a passive rigid body. So whenever I create an active rigid body, it will fall with it. Okay. All right. So so it's a barrier basically um, now between uh, the active rigid body and the infinite space we have in 3D. We don't we don't want it to fall down, so that's why we create a floor. All right, so let's go ahead and create a ball. Let's go ahead and start with that. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and just pull the ball just above the floor. Now you don't have to add an active rigid body because the constraint will do that for you, which is really nice. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and hold the space bar down, go to fields and solvers, and go to uh, create in nail constraint. Okay, so if I go in here and go to edit reset settings, that's what you should do. You can type in the constraint name here if you'd like. Um, you don't need to. If you want to, you can. And uh, we have the choice here which one we want. So if you clicked on nail and you wanted something else, then you can go in here and change it. Um, now, interpenetrate, that only works on some things. You can see that some things open up and, and some things are shattered out. Like in nail, I can't do interpenetrate. And then in pin, I can. And then hinge will give you, will open up this initial position and initial orientation. Um, those things are opened up. And you can see as I go through here that some things are grayed out, some things are not. Um, they're independent to that particular constraint. Let's go to nail again. Set initial position. If I turn that off, what happens is that it sets this initial position here in the center. Let's go ahead and do that. And then what you do is that you can see in the outliner, you probably should have outliner open. So windows, outliner, get that opened up and you can click on it. And you can move it. Okay. So now it's connected. You can see in perspective view, it's hard to see in the, in the front view, but in perspective view you can see it. Okay, cool, awesome. So, what we can do now is um, you can set this up any way you want to, um, however you want the animation to be or the dynamic simulation to go. You really can't animate the ball um, because now it's a it's a rigid body. Okay, so what we're gonna do is what if we move this over and up like that? Okay. And if I go in here, it will update for me. Sometimes it doesn't update right away. Let's go ahead and face the Z. There we go. 
and so we've got the same kind of position here in the in the front view now it really it's really not going to work right now I mean it will work like if it was down here it would not work because we'd have to apply gravity it would just stay put it wouldn't do anything it's like a a ball on a spring uh, on a string or actually it's a ball on a solid rod that's how I would look at it it's just solid rod because that this won't flex this little guy right here this constraint will not flex okay not like a real rope like if I push the ball out and then had it fall down it would swing it w it's not like that so I'll show you how it works alright so let's go ahead and select it move it over and move it up and what I can do is I'm gonna go ahead and rotate that like this so it looks like it it's it's in the right orientation okay alright so I'm gonna click off of that click on the ball and go into fields and solvers and click on gravity okay and now when I play the simulation you can see that it works okay now I'm gonna give myself a little more simulation time so I'm gonna go to 400 and there's nothing you can't do with this the fact is that you can control this pretty easily and I was pretty surprised when I first started this I, this has been around for a long time maybe 10 or 12 years let's go ahead and go into A you can control it by these now because it's not touching the ground it's not touching anything or it's not hitting anything um, these really don't have any anything to do it really won't control anything the dampening is what's going to keep is going to control this and the impulse like if you want to impulse on the X right see that's X Y and Z if I did an impulse of 10 it would push that around so you could control it by these you can do spin impulse right so these three things we could we can control or actually these four things alright so with that said dampening is going to slow it down let's say or keep it from you know normally that would lose energy okay and it's not really losing energy at all it's just going to go back and forth forever see right here's where it hit and it's going to do that forever right that's not correct um, it loses energy so um, dampening is what's going to help you with that so I'm going to do a point one and normally that's a good start okay so let's say it goes up to here now it doesn't do that and now it won't reach this one probably on the next one very close you can see it's it's t it's losing energy was and that's normal okay so point one works pretty realistically here for a heavy object okay all right um, so that's how you can control now the impulse you can control the impulse um, by giving it an impulse here at one and that's gonna push it okay as you can see give it a push so that's kind of like if it was lightweight and the wind is blowing it you know and you could you could mess with that impulse and animate that impulse so for instance that if I want it to really look like uh, wind grabbing it oh then I could go in here and animate that so let's say it pushes it up almost over because it's a big gust of wind and then um, we lose it a little bit you can you go ahead and go ahead and, and uh, right click over this and keyframe that and animating that will push it a little bit push it a little bit make it look like the wind is blowing it and that would take some time to get it to look right okay I'm gonna go a little bit less than that on that one so let me give it a try um, so I'm gonna impulse it there and then I'm gonna kill it a little bit on the frame uh, let's say 30 okay and uh, keyframe that and then give it to frame 40 I'm gonna go get give it impulse of one again and let's just see what that looks like okay 
so you can see that the wind kind of picks up on it and, it, and, I, and I turned it off and then the wind hits it again and so you can do some really cool interesting things with this okay alright so that is basically the nail constraint alright so um, you can easily have a hammer so let's say an upside down hammer would work really nice or the Newton's uh, pendulum where we have you know a roll of, row of steel balls that are connected to wires and then you pull one up and you hit it and the energy is transmitted through all those that are touching each other and then it shoots out the other side it pushes the other one and just goes back and forth back and forth you could create something like that with this or you could have a hammer or a shoe anything that's nailed in position would work great okay so just keep that in mind what what things you can do keep in mind though if you do a hammer and you have a head of a hammer and the body of the hammer make sure before you add the constraint the nail constraint that you have it combined you do you center pivot delete by type history and freeze transformations because it's going to pivot along this constraint it's a constraint it will take over okay so but make sure the the whatever you use is a solid one piece object okay now you can combine two pieces together that's what you mean by solid um, or five or six pieces or whatever how many pieces you need but make sure it's combined and then you delete by type history freeze transformations and get it where you want it uh, to start with it make sure it's if it's upside down it needs to be upside down then you start with that and you add the constraint that way okay so just keep that in mind Alright, I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next video and that will be the pin constraint.